Well, thank the Lord for eyesight, the ability to see. There's two kinds of blindness. So if you have your sermon guide, take your sermon guide, your notes. Uh, that'll help you learn a little bit more. There's two kinds of blindness. Number one, physical blindness. Now, this is the kind of blindness that's probably obvious. It's physical, but physical blindness means you can't see the flowers or the bugs on the flowers or cherry pie or pumpkin pie. You can't see it. Or in my particular case, the new canes being built down at McClintock and Baseline. Uh, I've bought stock in canes recently. I eat there about two or three or four times a week. Uh, physical blindness is you just can't see it. Number two, the second kind of blindness is Jesus blindness. You can't see Jesus doing the miracles around you. You can't see him working the miracles in the Bible. You can't see Jesus as God. You can't see Jesus as deity. You can't see Jesus as described in the Word of God. You can't see Jesus as your Savior. You don't need to be forgiven because you've got it all together. That's what you think. So write this down, number one. If you fail to look beyond miracles, to believe and worship the worker of all miracles, Jesus says, you are blind. We're in John chapter 9, verse 35. We have been in John for the last four Sundays. This is our last Sunday, John chapter 9, verse 35. And it's interesting that the entire chapter of John 9 is devoted to a blind man. A blind man who was a beggar, Jesus saw him begging, Jesus saw he was blind, the Pharisees were after Jesus, but that didn't stop Jesus from stopping at the gate of the temple to address the need of the blind man. We're now at the end, on the other side of the kangaroo court, the Pharisees, the, the group of people that had this bias, this anti-Jesus mentality, so now we're at the other end, and we pick up the story in John chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus heard that they, that's the anti-Jesus judges, the Pharisees. You could almost make reference to the Sanhedrin, although the Sanhedrin is not specifically identified, but there is this kangaroo-like court that has been assembled. And they, these biased judges, they had put him, the blind man, they had put him out. So they had executed this kangaroo court. They made a decision. Some people, some scholars believe that little phrase, put him out, is an official statement of excommunication from the synagogue. Put him out. So Jesus heard that they had put him out of the synagogue, that they had officially censored him, that they officially punished him. And upon finding him, so notice what's going on here. Some of you are here today and you think you're lonely and isolated. And physically, in COVID, you might be that way. But Jesus hasn't forgotten you. The text here says, Jesus heard that they had put him out and upon finding him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? I suggest to you that little phrase, put him out. They ousted, they literally excommunicated now, please mark this in your mental, spiritual mind, or mark it in the uh, margin of your Bible. To my knowledge and my research and the best that I could figure out, this is the first believer in the New Testament that has been persecuted because he believes in Jesus Christ. This is just an amazing, when you stop and think about, we're at John chapter 9, and you go back Yes, Jesus was persecuted, but this is really the first follower of Jesus that actually gets persecuted. A blind man, kicked out of the synagogue, rejected. There's 41 verses on his story. There's a lesson for you and me today. 
you need to understand that modern day researchers, 2,000 years later, they are clearly, many of them are saying there is a persecution and genocide of Christians across the world. It's worse today than at any other time in history. It's more violent to be a Christian living today. They're crucified, they're beheaded, they're hanged, they're beaten, their homes are set on fire. This blind man, by religious judges, ousted, kicked out of the synagogue. I think it's exciting in verse 35 that we watch the shepherd, the good shepherd, going looking for the lost sheep, and next Sunday is John chapter 10, is the story of the good shepherd. Jesus immediately finds the lost sheep, and so in John chapter 10, we're going to broaden this not just to the blind man, but we're going to broaden this to anyone who chooses to listen and follow and listen closely to Jesus. John chapter 9, verse 35, Jesus heard that they had put him out, and upon finding him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Notice in verse 35, Jesus has not seen this blind man since the healing. Think with me what has happened in some 35 verses. And Jesus is not focused on his persecution. Jesus is not focused on his brown or black eyes, whatever color his new eyes might be. Jesus is not even talking to this blind man about, hey, what happened at the kangaroo court? He's not saying, what did your parents say about the miracle? He's not saying, what did the neighbors say? Jesus doesn't even find the blind man and say, hey, you remember I put mud on your eyes and I sent you to Siloam and you went there and you washed it off? He doesn't even talk about the miracle. Why? Because Jesus finds the blind man and he wants to say three words. Son of man. Don't miss the point. Some of you are blinded to spiritual things because you're just hung up on the physical. Jesus finds a blind man and says, do you believe in the Son of Man? So he goes straight to Son of Man, bypassing persecution, bypassing the miracles. That's where probably a lot of us would stop and want to talk about. Let's talk about how much punishment the guy had. John 9, 36. The blind man answered by saying, and who is he? the Son of Man, sir, that I may believe in him. The blind man has not yet seen Jesus since the miracle. Jesus hasn't seen the blind man. The blind man hasn't seen Jesus since the miracle. Jesus shifts, listen, to something far better than miracles. A lot of us are living our lives hung up on physical stuff, how much more money we can make, how big our houses are, our cars, the, the physical stuff that we can see through our eyes that we can accumulate. He goes far beyond the miracle to something better. Better than new eyes. In the Greek here, the word for miracle is simeon. It is literally a harbinger. A miracle is a sign that points something bigger, greater that's coming. What can be more important than your eyesight? Jesus meets the physical needs of the blind man so he can now meet his spiritual needs. First, friends, Jesus gives physical kindness. He gives physical compassion, physical mercy. And he's doing all of this to get to those beautiful words, son of man. Verse 35 again, 935. Jesus heard that they had put him out, and upon finding him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of Man? Verse 36. The blind man that now sees answered by saying, who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? 37. Jesus said to him, you have both seen with your new eyes him. And he is the one who is talking. You're hearing him right now. He, Jesus is saying, I'm the Son of Man. Look at 38. And the blind man who now sees said, I believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. Friends, three words 
You should etch it in your memory banks so that when you're feeling isolated, persecuted, when you're feeling like you don't have enough money, when you lose your physical eyesight, three words, I believe, Lord. If you want to summarize the entire book of John, one word, believe. Three words, believe in Jesus. No more talking about miracles. See, spiritual eyes get you off of the physical onto the deity of Jesus. A lot of us are just locked into earth. You must believe beyond miracles. That's what Jesus is saying. You must believe beyond the miracle to the Son of Man. So, friends, this is a conversation Jesus is having with this man out in public for all to see. There's a group, there's a crowd watching Jesus carry on this conversation with this blind man. Isn't this something in today's 21st century we struggle to mention the word Jesus out in public. It doesn't stop Jesus. It doesn't stop the blind man from saying, I want to believe. We have to back up every day and understand it's not about us physically. It's not about our physical security. It's about eternal security. We must push ourselves constantly out of the earth complex and see that God has something far greater than earth. John chapter 9, verse 30, 39. Jesus, the fair ultimate judge that you will stand before, that I will stand before, he makes this statement 2,000 years ago. For judgment, for this verdict, for this decision, I came into this world so that those who do not see may see like the blind man who eventually sees the Son of Man, who eventually worships the Son of Man, so that those who do not see may have spiritual eyes. That's the first group. And then the second group there, and those who see like the biased judges, the religious hypocrites, for those who see may, watch this, become blind. Jesus is changing the topic, and he wants to change the topic in your soul. Jesus wants you to no longer be looking at the miracle or at the physical stuff that your eyes want to focus on. He wants you to look beyond the miracles. Look at verse 40, 940. Those, there was a group that followed, a crowd that followed Jesus. Disciples and Jewish people other people that didn't like Jesus, that were anti-Jesus. It was a mixed group. Those who were with Jesus, him, from the Pharisees heard these things, what Jesus is talking about right now, and said to Jesus, we are not blind too, are we? Now, friends, how smart do you have to be to catch Jesus' point? Most people are physically, most people physically can see. But these guys are blind in a different way. My challenge to you today is how clear can you see God at work around you? Can you physically see him? No, it's a spiritual vision. You see God moving in and around you spiritually. But they are blind in a different way. 41. Jesus said to them, them being the Pharisees that were hanging in this crowd, Jesus says to these religious hypocrites, these biased anti Jesus people, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now that you maintain, we see your sins remain. And we're going to come back to verse 41. And we're going to pull out a little bit more out of this in just a moment. Number two, Jesus is saying people have blind spots. So I'm saying to Roger today, I'm saying to every one of you today, do you have blind spots? Check your blind spots. Look back with me at verse 35. Not physical eyes, we're talking about Jesus' eyes. Look back at verse 35. Jesus heard that they, the Pharisees, this, the biased judges, had put the blind man out of the synagogue. 
And literally, this is a, a banishment from the synagogue, and there is literally a hatred towards you out in the community. And upon finding him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, I'd like for you to circle Son of Man. Remember back in verse 17, the blind man called Jesus a prophet? Well, Son of Man is much, much more powerful than a prophet. Jesus has given this blind man new eyes. The Pharisees bring the blind man to a religious court. This blind man has never seen Jesus with his new eyes. Verse 35 is the first time the blind man has actually seen the person that granted him vision. He's now excommunicated. Jesus finds him, doesn't talk to him about anything else except, do you believe in the Son of Man? I'm saying gently to every one of you today, do you sincerely believe in the Son of Man? We have to back up and understand, he's not talking about physical eyes here. The term son of man is used 80 times in the New Testament and mostly by Jesus. Many, many times in the book of John. Jewish people understood the term son of man referred to Messiah. Daniel 70, Psalm 80. Look with me at verse 36, John 9, 36. He, the blind man, answered by saying, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Now, he's never seen Jesus, but he's willing to believe in the Messiah. Look at 37. Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and he is the one who is right this moment talking with you. Jesus tells the truth. Never doubt it. He's not going to lie to you. When you have cancer, he's not going to lie to you. Amanda Watson was in a tragic car accident uh, late, late last night. He's not going to lie to her. He's going to be with her. In the good, the bad, and the ugly, when you go through your worst situation, whether it's persecution or something else, Jesus the Messiah, the promised one, is right there. He's not only going to be with you, he's going to find you in that moment, what the text is saying. If you believe in Jesus, look at verse 38. He said, I believe, Lord, and he worshiped. Christian here today, if you sincerely believe in Jesus, you will gladly worship him. Not just on Sunday mornings or Saturdays or Sunday nights. Because spiritually you're sensitive. There's more to this physical earth than what I see. No more talking about physical eyes. Jesus points out a different kind of blind spot that he wants Roger to be aware of. Friends, worship, the text is saying, Worship not the miracle, but the worker of miracles. Look at 39. Jesus said, because of this verdict, because of this decision, because of this judgment, for this judgment I came into this world, that those who do not see may see. Not just physical eyes, but salvation. To see God, to see Jesus, to experience forgiveness, to find out what the Son of Man, this Messiah is really all about, to experience God. And those who see may become blind. Are you hard-hearted to the things of God? Are you serious about God? Are you serious about Jesus? See, Jesus is making two decisions here. Two judgments. Number one, judgment one. He wants to help blind people see. It's physical in this particular case, but it's beyond physical. It's from darkness to light. It's from the temporal to eternity. It's from the man to deity. That's what's going on here. Some blind people may see because Jesus chooses to heal them, like the blind man. But friends, those people who admit they need Jesus, those people who trust in God, those who believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you will be granted sight beyond the physical. You may not fully understand what you're experiencing or what you can see, but all of a sudden you believe in Jesus sincerely, and ah, I can see God at work in my life. The second judgment here is those who see those who claim to physically see are really blind. This is amazing. The Pharisees. 
It's a very powerful point here. Listen, these Pharisees, they got it all together up here. They got the power, they got the bias, they got the control, they got the prejudice, they understand it all, they know the Old Testament better than anybody else, and they're arrogant. And they can lie against Jesus. They have a hardness about Jesus. This last week, a neighbor, I was walking, a neighbor that, that I know fairly well, I said, hi, he's been cooped up for nine months, his wife, two kids, one kid has lung problems, so they're really, really sensitive. And I said, hey, how's it going? And it was, like, it was like somebody put a big neon sign. It's time to talk. And he just unloaded in a very, very humble way his story. Not the story just about his daughter. Not the story just about his son. Not the story just about his wife. Not, to, not just about work. After he gave us those four, me, those four stories, I then said to him, because I have a close relationship, I said, you're blessed. You're blessed. And the guy th just froze. Started crying. If you were to see this man, tattoos, big, crying, no. I've never gone fishing with the man. He has come to our church. He's just the tears. Finally, he took a hold of himself. He says, Roger, I am blessed. But it hasn't always been that way. He then chose to go back some 15 years ago and talk about the moment he was breaking every crime in the, at work, in the neighborhood, everywhere. And he was wound up in the back of a police car. Listen to me. Arrogance. I don't need any help. I can do whatever I want. I can lie. I can cheat. I can steal. I can manipulate. I can overpower anybody. That's what he was telling me. And then he got arrested. Handcuffed, told me put in the back of the police car. You would think we were in a, a high-powered therapy session. And we're on the front sidewalk, the front driveway, and he's trying to hang up Christmas lights. More tears. And then he said, Roger, I met God for the first time in the back of that police car. And I, I'm, I'm keeping my mouth shut because this is, this is really good. <laughs> I mean, this is a powerful testimony of a star witness standing up talking about God. I'm not going to mess this up. He said, my life changed at that moment. He said, going forward, I followed the law. I found God. I found Jesus and eventually found my wife. He says, Roger, I'm not perfect, but I'm terribly ashamed of my past. Listen, he had a come to meet Jesus moment. All of us have to have it. And when you have it, you spiritually are awakened in ways that you can't possibly understand. This guy meets Jesus after being arrested by the police, put in handcuffs in the back of a police car, and finally, something breaks through. Look at verse 40. Those who were with him, this is in the crowd, these Pharisees, from the Pharisees, now imagine, 
You have a group of people that are around you that have been following you for months. And there are biased people plotting in that group to get rid of you. And Jesus knew it. Those who were with him, Jesus, from the Pharisees, heard these things and said to him, we are not blind too, are we? Ladies and gentlemen, God just told them they're blind. You see the arrogance? I'm not blind. God just told you you're blind. You see how easy it is for humanity to usurp the deity of Jesus? If God said it, of course you're blind. Listen to the word of God. The verdict is, the decision is that God can call you out any day, any hour, any moment, any time. Police car, anywhere. But can you see God moving? Can you sense God moving? Are you pushing him away? You need to be aware from this John chapter 9, there's at least seven blind spots. You got to be aware of them. I need these reminders. My guess is you need them. Number one, the blind spot is you think you know more than Jesus. Really? You know more than God? That's my neighbor. Not anymore, but that's where he was. That's these Pharisees in the, in the New Testament. They know more than Jesus. They can call Jesus a liar. They see the miracles. They know the miracles, but, but they know more than Jesus. Number two, you said Jesus is a fake. Really? But look at his miracles. Look at this mastery of the Old Testament. Look at his capacity to connect all the dots. Look at his prophecies come true. Look at who Jesus is. You really know more than Jesus? And you got the gall to say he's a fake? He's a fraud? Number three, blind spot. You saw the evidence of a blind man who got his new eyes. These Pharisees saw it. And you see God at work, and yet the next day you doubt him. You see the evidence of what Jesus has done in thousands and millions and billions of people's lives over 2,000 years plus the Old Testament, and you think that somehow everything's okay? You saw the evidence of a blind man who got new eyes, but you wouldn't believe. Number four, blind spot. You lied about it. You lied. You lied. Number five. You could not stop bullying this blind man. Maybe one lesson for some of us here today, never bully another person again. Male, female, young or old, rich or poor, never ever verbally, never in your mind, never in your heart, treat another human being as trash. Number six, you bullied his parents and his neighbors. Number seven, you threatened everyone with punishment. Wow. Do you, do you shame people? Do you punish people with your verbal words? Look at John 9, 41. Jesus said to them, if you were blind like the blind man, you would have no sin because Jesus forgave the blind man. He's been healed and forgiven. But now that you maintain, watch this, your lies and arrogance, we see, they say, your sins remain. Now, one more blind spot. Sins of arrogance against the truth. You really think you know more than this book called the Bible? Really? That's been around literally for thousands of years? And you've got the gall to say, you know better? You do not believe in Jesus. You claim to see everything, but you're blind. And you're going to be held accountable for every sin you've committed. That's what the text is saying. Number three. Jesus says some people can't see God at work. Question. Can you? Or are you bored with God? 
Or are you bored with life? Are you mad at God? Are you angry? Can you see God at work around you in the little things? Or are you so wrapped up in your own narcissistic little world that you can't watch God move and breathe and talk to you? See, the whole point of John chapter 9 is that God wants to give us spiritual eyes for us to do nasal gazing, for us to be looking at each other physically? No, spiritually. God wants us to get beyond earth and see the kingdom of God that God is building. John 9, 39. Jesus said, for judgment verdict, for this decision, for this verdict back in heaven, I came into this world so that those who do not see may see and those who see may become blind. Verse 28. Go back with me to John 9, 28. Watch this. This same group that Jesus is dealing with, look at verse 28. They spoke abusively to the blind man. They, these Pharisees, these anti-Jesus judges, you are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. Friends, the blind man says, look at 933. If this man, Jesus, were not from God, he could do nothing. Number four. Jesus says, we can't see the hurt that we bring on people. That's what verse 39 is all about. That's what verse 40 is all about. And look again at 928. They spoke abusively. Do a little word study. And that brings up the whole idea of hatred, detest, despicable, despised. That's how non-believers treat believers. They reject them. They jumped all over the blind man. Number five, to see what God is doing, faith in Jesus must grow. We must get out of our little bubble I'm blind, I, I hurt people, I lie, I doubt, I bully, and i got to repent and turn to Jesus. That's what verse 35, Jesus heard that they put him out, and upon finding him, Jesus said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Friends, this blind man pushes past human logic to see Jesus as the Son of God. Jesus heard my story. That's what faith does. Jesus cares about me. Jesus found me. Those Pharisees don't care about me. 36, he answered by saying, and who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Faith means you're sincere about finding God. God's going to find you. He's going to come at you. The shepherd's not going to, he's going to keep coming, but you're going to have to respond. 37, Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and he is the one who is talking with you. 38, and he said, the blind man, now the seer, I believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. 39 is about the challenge to believe or not believe. 40 is the statement that Jesus will call you out. 41, Jesus is saying, there's some people that are really blind. So can I just close with this? To see, friends... What God is doing, faith in Jesus must grow. You, you must yield to the physical, give it up, let it go, back off. Jesus is not the liar. He's the truth giver. I'll close with this story. Last week, the governor of Mississippi, Tate Reeves, on Facebook, said this, it is fair to say that this last week and a half has been personally for me the most difficult of 2020, a year we can all agree has by its very nature been tough on all of us. Tate Rees, the governor of Mississippi, goes on to say, my two oldest girls have been by themselves in self-isolation. 
my youngest daughter tested positive along with many of her precious friends and classmates. Plus, I have to deal with not just my governor stuff, but now with my family, Tate says. I wanted to feel sorry for myself. I wanted to focus on the challenges. Honestly, I wanted to focus on all the negatives. But then I prayed. Tate says, God put the book of Isaiah on my heart, specifically Isaiah 41.10, and I quote, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The governor writes, We are going to get through these tough times. We're going to persevere. We're going to come out of it even stronger on the other side. Why? Because God is with us and because God is our strength and refuge. And then he quotes Psalm 46. I challenge, I nudge, I plead, I beg. Please, number six, blind spots prevent us from seeing our own sins. Look deep into the truth of Jesus. Ask the God of the Spirit of God to work on your life. Trust Jesus, not yourself. Admit that you have blind spots. I have to admit that. Jesus is God. I'm not God. I need to confess every day that Jesus is real, that the Bible is true, that the Son of Man, Messiah, rules. And it's not about the physical stuff primarily. The physical is really secondary. It's Jesus primarily. Bow your heads, please. God, I thank you for a blind man, and I thank you for my neighbor that you moved in both of their lives to remind me to believe that you're God and I'm not. And the center of the universe is Jesus. With every head bowed, how about you? Can I pray for your blind spots, those weaknesses, those sins, that arrogance, whatever the blind spots may be between you and God, that God would, his truth, his light would move and you would see more. With every head bowed, just lift up a hand, Pastor, pray for me. Thank you, thanks, thanks, thank you, thanks, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I want to be the blind beggar in today's society. I want to be able to stand before anyone and say, Jesus touched me. Jesus forgave me. I want to be like my neighbor who's not afraid to testify that he was arrested and put in handcuffs in a police car and he had a Jesus moment. God, give all of us that capacity. All God's people said...